I think we can all agree that being in prison is not everyone's cup of tea, and most of us would try our hardest to avoid spending any time behind bars. However, it's a completely different story for people who belong to the LGBTQ community, because the sad reality is that they have it worse. This is not some sort of opinion or a speck of imagination, because there are countless stories that can prove how it can be a total nightmare. Some even say that prison is a place where you don't want your sexuality and, in this video, we will go over the challenges, the dark truth, and how it's about time to overcome the stigma. Let's get started. Homosexuality in Prison in United States Jails and prisons are traumatizing and often dangerous places, even more so for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer people. LGBTQ plus individuals who would wind up behind bars are more likely to endure maltreatment than the general population in a country that incarcerates more of its citizens than any other significant nation in the world. In fact, being LGBTQ in a U.S. jail or prison typically involves daily humiliation, physical and sexual assault, and the worry that if you complain, things will become worse. But this is not the worst of it because records revealed that many members of the community are imprisoned in solitary confinement for months or years just because of their sexual orientation. But why is this still happening? LGBTQ plus people, especially people of color and low-income earners, are disproportionately prone to encounter the criminal justice system. A history of bigotry, abuse, and profiling of LGBTQ plus people by law enforcement, along with high rates of poverty, homelessness, and discrimination in schools and the workplace, has resulted in disproportionate encounters with the judicial system, resulting in greater levels of incarceration. Not to mention how policies that criminalize poverty, homelessness, and involvement in survival economies like sex work also have a disproportionate impact on these individuals, particularly transgender people of color. The numbers will surely shock you. According to studies, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people are overrepresented in jails and prisons. According to federal data, these people are three times more likely to be incarcerated than the general population. On top of this, over 40% of incarcerated women are lesbian or bisexual. Furthermore, an estimated 7% of youth in the United States identify themselves as members of the community, while 12% to 20% of youth in juvenile detention facilities identify themselves as LGB, and 85% of those who are incarcerated are people of color. If these numbers don't sound alarming, then I don't know what is. But wait, there's more because sometimes the abuse is inflicted by people who are supposed to uphold the law. Abuse based on sexual identification is a regular occurrence for many of these people. It may take numerous forms, including from other convicts and prison officials. In fact, a 2015 poll of 1,118 prisoners performed by Black and Pink, a nationwide group that connects pen pals and offers support for LGBTQ convicts, backs up this claim. It discovered that 83% of respondents were subjected to verbal harassment by other detainees, while 70% were subjected to discrimination and verbal harassment by prison officials. However, this is not the end of it, because stories from real people will surely blow your mind. True Stories of Abuse Sometimes, it takes a true story in order to understand how serious a situation is, and homosexuals behind bars have a handful of experiences that will help society open its eyes to the dark truth they had to endure while serving their sentence. And you would not expect the long-term effect of these encounters on a person's mental health. Just like how one person shared, a friend of his decided it was better to die than to stay alive inside prison. In an article published in a nonprofit journalism website, an inmate narrated the time his friend, whom he called Michael, told him about what kinds of demons he had to face in his daily life while he was serving. Based on the story, Michael was being pressured by another inmate to have sexual intercourse. The intimidation got so bad that Michael didn't know what to do and was visibly troubled. But his story is one of the thousands that were left untold. There were even former inmates who mentioned how they would work out as much as they could so they could gain muscles and make themselves physically intimidating just to avoid being the target of such harassment. However, this is only the tip of the iceberg. For instance, Evie Litwak, 65, who was originally from New York, claimed that she was punished for disclosing her sexual orientation to the public while inside, 
She claims that part of this was spending the night beneath fluorescent lights that shone nonstop and in the punishment bunks, which were next to a noisy ice maker. Litwak claims that she was placed in solitary confinement for seven weeks at one point after penning a narrative about a fellow prisoner who passed very soon after she was refused medical care by guards. And sadly, prison is about punishments, and if you are homosexual, chances are you are punished more. Furthermore, the majority of Americans are ignorant of this abuse as it takes place behind prison walls. Or maybe they are aware of it but still choose to ignore the problem, no one really knows. But one thing is for sure, these stories are only part of a huge picture that authorities and people in power should take notice of. The stigma. As mentioned above, members of the community are disproportionately represented in the criminal justice system at all levels, beginning with engagement in the juvenile justice system. They experience much greater rates of arrest, incarceration, and community monitoring than do heterosexual and cisgender individuals. This is particularly true for gay women and transgender individuals. Additionally, LGBTQ inmates endure exceptionally cruel circumstances and treatment while behind bars. The lengthier sentences that judges impose on gay, lesbian, and bisexual individuals may be partially responsible for the high numbers of these individuals behind bars. Lesbian or bisexual women had higher prison sentences than straight women in both jails and prisons, according to the same analysis of national inmate survey data. Moreover, males who identify as homosexual or bisexual are more likely than heterosexual men to get terms of more than 10 years in jail. On top of this, prison environments may have a prevalent culture of homophobia, where individuals hold negative attitudes or beliefs about homosexuality. This can lead to discrimination, harassment, or violence against gay inmates. Not to mention how these inmates experience social isolation due to the stigma associated with their sexual orientation. Other inmates may distance themselves or even engage in bullying or harassment. There are also reports about how most prisons have a higher risk of violence against gay inmates, and this violence can be physical or verbal and may be fueled by prejudice or stereotypes. In addition to facing challenges from fellow inmates, gay individuals also experience discrimination from prison staff. This could manifest as unequal treatment, bias, or neglect. In some cases, gay inmates face difficulties accessing the same rights and privileges as their heterosexual counterparts. This could include issues related to visitation, medical care, or participation in programs. Due to the potential risks associated with being openly gay in prison, some individuals may choose to keep their sexual orientation a secret, leading to a form of self-imposed secrecy and isolation. It's important to recognize that not all prison environments perpetuate these stigmas, and efforts have been made in some places to address and reduce discrimination against LGBTQ individuals in the criminal justice system. However, the challenges faced by gay inmates can vary widely, and the overall culture within a specific prison plays a significant role in shaping these experiences. Additionally, legal and policy changes over time may influence the treatment of LGBTQ plus individuals in prison. The current picture. The experiences of LGBTQ plus individuals, including those who identify as gay, in prison vary widely depending on factors such as the prison's location, its policies, the prevailing culture among inmates and staff, and broader societal attitudes. Efforts have been made in various jurisdictions to address issues related to the treatment of these individuals within the criminal justice system. In America, the Prison Rape Elimination Act is a federal law that addresses the issue of sexual assault and rape in correctional facilities. While not specific to LGBTQ individuals, it contains provisions aimed at protecting all inmates, including those who identify as LGBTQ+. Furthermore, the law requires the development of standards for preventing, detecting, and responding to sexual abuse in confinement settings. We can't forget about the Eighth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution and how it prohibits cruel and unusual punishment. Courts have recognized that this includes protection against harassment, discrimination, and violence based on an individual's sexual orientation or gender identity. Courts have recognized the rights of transgender inmates to receive medically necessary care, including gender-affirming treatments, under the Eighth Amendment. However, the extent to which prisons are required to provide such care can vary, which means it's not yet perfect. There has been recognition of the importance of support networks for LGBTQ individuals in prison. 
Some facilities or advocacy groups may work to create spaces where individuals can find support and connection with others who share similar experiences. Changes in laws and legal precedents also impact the treatment of LGBTQ individuals in prison. For example, advancements in LGBTQ rights at a societal level may influence the treatment and rights afforded to these inmates. At the same time, they have the right to access legal resources and, if necessary, challenge conditions of their confinement that violate their rights. Despite positive changes, challenges such as discrimination, harassment, and violence against the minority in prison can still persist. In some cases, individuals may feel compelled to hide their sexual orientation or gender identity due to concerns about their safety. Additionally, progress and changes in this area continue to evolve, and while it's true that there is still a long way before we can finally see the change that we had been looking for, there is no shame in hoping that the time will come for this kind of abuse to finally disappear for good. How about you? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, make sure to give a like and subscribe for more.